Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of settling for mediocre are over. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to Project Relationship. Hi, welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. I'm Ken Hamilton. And we're going to talk today about how to reconnect. Yes. Which we could certainly use since Since. things have gotten a little out of hand lately and reconnection feels more important than ever. It does. Life is very busy and I know that's true for lots and lots of people and the pandemic hasn't made anything simpler. And... We have, um, I, I, we struggle to stay connected the same as anybody. Absolutely. And so we wanted to talk about reconnection, or you suggested that we talk about reconnection, which I thought was brilliant from the perspective of two people who are trying their best to remember how, how to stay connected while we're busy, but also while things aren't feeling 100% awesome. Right. We are still not at the end of this whatever it's been of a year and in fact we're just at the anniversary mark um for most of us of really realizing that life wouldn't be what we'd planned at least for a while it's been a rough year but i think we've learned a lot about what it takes what it means for the two of us at least to be connected under stress yeah and um through this stress i think we've found out some things anyway about what are the important things what are the things we can't do without yeah because when when we did without them this year there wasn't room for it we had to bring come back yeah it's funny how there was more time in some ways because things like commutes and um errands and things yep. be, those really boiled down we both happened to have jobs that had us working from home pretty quick um and we we're definitely not essential we're not, we're I'm not, not essential. an essential worker no i no i feel i definitely feel inessential and so my hats off to all who are essential and Ooh, were yeah. but we had a weird situation where at first we thought that there'd be all this recovered time and it it actually felt like there might be more time for connection but as the months ground on i noticed that we were busier than ever yeah Um, More of our kids had shifted to homeschooling. We've always homeschooled, but more of them were home homeschooling, obviously. Um, And both of our work situations picked up. You happen to work in healthcare software development. And um, I, while I work at a whole bunch of things, some of which is, is teaching at the college level, things got busy really fast. And I don't know, I think we were maybe in month three or four of the pandemic year when I started to notice that we were spending lots and lots of time together, but that didn't necessarily translate to quality time. I know that's like a tossed around phrase, but it just, it wasn't necessarily translating, even though you and I talk about this kind of stuff all the time. We talk about it all the time, but so you early on, early on, like a month or so in, you're like, oh, so we're going to have all this time together and at home. And so let's let's um, let's prepare for that. And so you ordered um, jigsaw puzzles. It's like, oh, we'll have time. We'll sit and we'll work. And I thought that was a, a great idea for connection, in fact. And um, it kind of worked for the uh, like 45 minutes total that we got to spend on it because life turned out to be far more complex than we thought it was going to be. Right. So two things happened that I think happened for a lot of people. One was that um, there were new ways that time was going to have to be spent, like finding groceries where we hadn't used to have that struggle. And that time I believe has passed for most of us. Um, We've figured out what our, what our pathways are for managing our life. But the other was over familiarity. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yep, we were spending lots of time together. So we were technically connecting, 
but we weren't exactly feeling uh, juicy. Yeah. Or I don't know, some other word. I, we weren't, there was, there was, it was as if with all the time spent together, we were getting on each other's nerves. Let's just call a spade a spade. Because, yeah. And we were also struggling, I think, some with just not having anything new to say to each other. Yep. Like, there was yeah. nowhere to go out to. And my job is, um, it's great. It's interesting for me. It's not interesting to talk about. So it's not like I would come to the end of the day and bring it to you. Hey, look at here. All these things I did. did. Uh, it wasn't, it's not that interesting. And, our and my are, job is interesting, but most of it is confidential. It's confidential. So, so, yep, there is a lot of, there was a strange, there was a strange mood that I felt like sort of descended over us. Mm -hmm. And that mood was, wow, there you are again, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like two feet away from me. And I've run out of new things to bring you. I've yeah. run out of new ideas. Now, that wasn't always true because some stuff happened too. I published a book and my father passed away. Um, we struggled with some stuff with different kids. There stuff has happened. happened. There's stuff to talk about. It wasn't, but, it's not been a year of boredom at all. But, but I missed the kind of connection that came from each of us going out into the world in different directions and then coming back together and having something to just to just talk about to share to i don't even know to pull apart and the word that comes up for me is excitement oh yeah something there to be wasn't excited. all that much exciting um to yeah there was too much about. stress to be excited too right. yep so now that that part has settled down looking back i think we both have identified the one thing that kept us going <laughs> even though there we were struggling with the connection and that is ritual. Having things to come back to and say, all right, you know, well, we do this. I know it doesn't feel, we're not moved to do it in the moment, but it's what we do. And then when you do it, we would be more connected than we were when we started off. So let's get clear. What yeah. do we mean about ritual, well, right? What is a ritual exactly? Uh, for me, ritual is a, a planned, um event interaction i mean it doesn't have to be at all complex but a, a planned intentional interaction you and i are going to do this thing yeah. and um for us one of the things was um breakfast on our screen porch so we every morning i would make breakfast we would go out we would eat we would talk i would make cappuccino we would drink and talk and then we would start our day which usually would actually have started our day, or at least you would before right. that, and then there was a break. So let's let's get clear about the 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 crux okay. of yep. ritual, though, because what you're describing sounds like it could be routine. Oh, the difference, which between is a little bit different ritual, right. from ritual. I wrote about it in uh, I think chapter four, but I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. In project relationship, I wrote about ritual um, in a few different ways. But I talked about how it was about that intentionality that you're that yeah. you just described. Yeah. It's not just routine. It's what we do, what we agree to do, how we do it, yes. when we do it. Yeah. And I just ran across actual data to back up that it was the the study was run in 2019. So I did not have it when I was writing the book. But it's a study done by um, Garcia Rada. Um, at all in 2019. It was actually four separate studies and they very carefully delineated that ritual was different from routine and in a very important way. Ritual was different because ritual had mutuality. There was a mutual agreement and okay. symbolic meaning. Mm -hmm. yep. So it's not so much that it was symbolic in some sort of esoteric way, symbolic as in it means this thing. And they open the study in this with this beautiful description. Um, it's just a story that they're talking about where this guy is saying, well, how did you know you were you were going to get a divorce to this other guy? And this and the first guy says, well, every morning I got up and I made her coffee. And then one morning. I didn't I didn't want to. 
and she didn't care either. It's so a, it's a brilliant start it, to the, the study because the meaning behind the coffee, yeah. it's not about the coffee. Yep. It's the symbolic meaning attached to it was a, a notifier. It was a, it was a symbolic, it was in Lacanian psychology. It would be that, that symbolic gesture means so much. It's the signifier of something so much grander. It is yeah. what has held us together through, through some ridiculously stressful situations. Yeah. Some ridiculously so, stressful and some um, regularly stressful. Yeah, those absolutely. are bad enough. I mean, and there are, were mornings when maybe we had had a fight the night before and it hadn't been resolved yet. And I get up and um, and I make breakfast. And which thank you for making breakfast. Well, you're welcome. Man. You took breakfast as your task yeah. as part of a ritual offering, basically. Yeah. That was a really important move. For years, I had made breakfast, um, and it had become something I resented. Really under duress, right? That, yeah. I, and I didn't. I mean, I don't mind making breakfast actually, but it had become it laden and right. heavy. And when you offered to start making breakfast, it was it was like this this offering of oh, I could take this this task, and it's not so much the task as how you do it. You approach it in this way that reminds me every morning that you're, you are not just thinking about us, but you're doing the us. You're, you are participating and you offer it in this very, it's this very conscious move that I see you make. You, you make the same breakfast every morning because that's how you and I like to do breakfast. And there is this moment of sort of pause. There's this half second pause before we both pick up our forks to eat where I say thank you and you receive the thank you. And it's in that moment for me, that's that's the thing. That's That's where the difference between ritual and routine, because you could get up and make breakfast and it was would just yeah. be because you wanted yep. to and it really it was just i'm the hungry habit. I'm, I'm, making hungry. Breakfast. I'm making breakfast yeah. and maybe you make me breakfast maybe you don't maybe that's the routine but because, because there's this moment of pause it's so hard to figure out how to describe it even it's like this little this little intake of breath with a deep exhale after it and i feel the care you've put into our relationship i feel gratitude i feel us moving together even if yeah even if yeah, the night before even was through rough trouble. for whatever reason yeah it's a it's a moment of awareness and intention i've heard the word mindfulness used i'm not sure if it's entirely accurate here but but that moment that makes turns it into an act of meaning that has meaning okay so we're the now the data proves us out okay we make these mutual agreements yep. um so i think of that as it it's planning and choosing. It's it's like planning anything. You can make a ritual out of just about anything. Um, one of the other things you do for me, I think that we're gonna expose right now that you do a lot of things for me. <laughs> you are you my my love language is acts of service, and you provide me many acts of service. You when you make me coffee, you always hand it to me with two hands, and I know where that comes from. It comes from your martial arts training, right? You yeah. hand someone something with reverence. Yeah. You hand it with two hands and you receive it with two hands. When I realized that that's what you were doing, um, I started receiving the coffee with two hands and it that creates the pause too. It's, yeah. I don't remember us talking about nope. the coffee as a ritual. Um, no, but we just, it was, yeah, it, w it started out as, as a routine. Yeah. It's like, well, we want that, so we're going to have it. But it developed into a ritual with with conscious with intentionality intention and meaning. Yeah, and it's um, which I love. And I'll say I thank do you again. too. I... Well, you're welcome, and and thank you for huh, for for noticing the meaning because it could also have gone that that. I would make the coffee and hand it to you and we drank it and went about our day without noticing the meaning. Yeah, things can, without a, yeah, things that can be 
become expected can be taken for granted. Yes, because really that easy. is a very different thing. If I were making this and I knew you expected it mm. and there was no meaning behind it, that's a completely different experience. So meaning and gratitude. Meaning and gratitude. And so a mutual And an understanding agreement. of the purpose. Yeah, because it's not about the coffee. No. In fact, we drink decaf, so it's no, no, really it's not, about, not about the coffee. Yep. No, um, it's about the and the ritual of preparing it. Yeah, and putting putting energy into the details of getting it right, so we both have a nice thing that we both enjoy, and then and that is the beginning of our day, knowing that we have two very different kinds of days that we have to sort of force to overlap. We do. Because what I do isn't anything like what you do, and our rhythms aren't the same at all. So we have to decide. And we know we're going to go out and sort of separate. Right. And so there's no right or wrong way to do this. Mm -mm. I don't Mm -mm. have... This is what we... I mean, and this, it's funny how both of them already are, they're about consuming a food. But in one of the four studies that Garcia Rada ran, there's... They talked about the fact that consuming something is actually, um, it's been demonstrated statistically significant that consuming something in some way, like taking something in, creates a a sense of of ritual and a sense of mutuality as well. Oh, which I thought was fascinating, and I I hadn't heard that, but it, I mean, it matches my experience, but I hadn't put it together. It feels like vindicated. Vindicated. (laughs) I love it when the data backs me up. That's great. That's good stuff. So, yeah. How? So, what is what's a ritual that we haven't really agreed upon? Sometimes we've come at them from the opposite angle. Like well, we noticed after the fact. Yeah. Oh, we actually have been building some meaning around this thing. I was just thinking about how we, <laughs> okay, how we shower. That was an accident. Yeah. We shower together every day. And that was not, that was not like, that wasn't a sex thing. That wasn't an, like, it, it wasn't, it's, it even sounds sexier than it is, I think. <laughs> we started showering together because, well, there are a lot of people in our, in our house and, and there would be like a crowd at right. the, at the shower line. Right. It's and so pure logistics, just a logistics thing. But that started years and years ago. And over years, I realized that it does have meaning to me. It has import. And I didn't notice it until one time. (laughs) You are a slow shower. (laughs) Yeah, I am. (laughs) You're a slow shower. So go ahead say it. It's, um, it's just so funny. I, well, I'm not sure which one I had, I was thinking of something. I'm not sure it's the same thing you were, which was, um, the, the day that, we because we go for a walk it's another thing that we do uh, very for most mornings and we come back and we take a shower and then we have breakfast and then one day we came home (laughs) you got in the shower and i was making breakfast i'm like what just happened it was so bizarre i I got all the way out of the shower and i I was coming downstairs i'm like i i have no what happened and it was such a funny break in our what I thought of as a routine at that point, I was, I was like, I guess. But it was we- obviously a ritual because the meaning behind it, the absence of it, I started, it wasn't a fight. It didn't turn into a no, fight, it didn't. but it had a lot of energy in it. It did. And that was the thing I felt. That's what I knew. <laughs> yeah. I felt my feelings were hurt. Right. I, I had feel, I, I caught the feelings about it. Yep. And when I came downstairs, I was a little pouty and What's the difference? All you do is take up space in the shower and shave for like a thousand years. It's not true. It's I do, not that long. Well, but you have I, a lot of face to shave. I have a lot of face to shave. <laughs> and I do. I stand there and I keep like a whole like me's worth of cold air from being in the shower with you. So yeah, there's that. There's purpose. that. No, it's I I love it. I didn't realize that it had developed into this. Yeah. So that was the ritual. day that I noticed like, oh, oh. And then I looked back and it's like, of course that's what happened. Right. And it had been years. So for years and years, it was a routine that was slowly developing into a ritual, this symbolic act of togetherness. And we actually had to talk it out to make it work for both of us because it turns out you don't actually care so much about standing in the shower and not being under the water. And I definitely don't want to have to like hang out and be cold. Right. And... And it just takes you longer to shower. 
we had to work out the details. But once we did, now it's this grounding time. It takes like nine minutes. It's a very, it's a very reasonable piece of our day. And it is sexy time. It is a time when there's a moment of erotic energy available. available. It doesn't have yep. to be, nothing even has to come of it, but it is a moment of, we're not having sex. We're not even moving towards sex because usually we're moving in different directions off into our day. But I don't know. There's just this sort of erotic charge to just bathing together. Yeah. Well, and, you know, er yes, there's an erotic charge to bathing together. Sure. It's, it's warm. We're naked. It's <laughs> wet. It's nice. <laughs> Um, and, and discovering that as a ritual, like, oh, we, apparently we have a ritual there is, has opened up the, the possibility of, of looking around through the rest of our lives for other right. rituals. It's a really interesting game. Like, it's oh. not just about like creating them. Sometimes no. when I suggest these to clients, when I say like, okay, let's, let's figure out what are the rituals that would help you ground your day, like anchor your day so that connection and turning towards each other becomes part of the norm. Yep. But don't forget to look feel, for the ones you've already got. Yeah. It can feel a little stilted. Sometimes people feel like they're trying too hard. Mm -hmm. First off, I don't think you can try too hard in this area. I think it is totally reasonable to just choose some things, yeah. mutually agree on them and, and choose some things that, that you feel something about something that has some kind of feeling to it and move into that because the ritual, the power of the ritual is worth any awkwardness totally. that you might and feel about building it up. Have you felt awkwardness in building ritual? I that's, haven't, that's, but you know what? Awkward is not, that's a not thing really I feel thing. a ton. Yeah. I not never. I certainly do have my awkward moments, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not terribly easily embarrassed or awkwardized. That's because not a word. I made up word again. I made up a word again. Because <laughs> I remember when we first started talking about this, I remember feeling awkward about having made this explicit decision to try a thing and have that be a ritual. I remember feeling like it was going to be awkward. And from here, after having, we've, we've done a few things. Looking back, I haven't the slightest idea why I thought it was going to be awkward. It yeah. isn't. It's your life. You do what you want with it and you look for meaning. And if you find it cool, if not, you move on. Right. And there's the thing. We have tried some things that haven't worked. We've tried starting some things as let's have this. This yep. will be part of our life. This will be one of our rituals. Yeah. And they just haven't worked. We tried having a shared pre bedtime reading time together. Yeah. We have tried that like six times. Yep. And we get a week into it and it does not work out. And it was a while before we realized that part of that was because I often have to read several hundred pages a week already. Right. Um, and I don't always want that as the last thing I do yeah. before I go to sleep. Um, but also sometimes my eyes are blurry. Or <laughs> you're like, yeah. Right? yeah, I'm tired. I'm old. I and can't so we see shift, this. We shifted again. We shifted yep. what we did. It setting down that ritual because both of us wanted it. It aligned with our values. It aligned with the things that we care about. Mm -hmm. So it made sense on paper. So we keep trying it. I bet we'll try it again. Oh, we will. <laughs> I we bet will. we will. Because it, it feels like it should work, but then it just doesn't stick. But then there have been some other rituals that they serve a purpose for a time. There yeah. was a period of time when um, we would sing to each other. Yeah a lot, like almost every night. Um, and looking back on that now and realizing it happens when we're in grief. Oh, okay. it's, it's happened a few times now when one or the other of us or both of us is experiencing some deep grief. I hadn't noticed that. That's yeah. interesting. Well, we sing to each other more. I think it's part of that sort of I don't know, uh, natural sort of parenting instinct that comes forward in mm, me. Okay. And I don't mean that in a creepy way, but there is this part of me that does, that wants to, to parent the grieving child in you yeah. when you're grieving. And I think vice versa. Yeah. And, and singing is, I mean, it's, that's just one of the things that comes out for yep, both of us for, for us in, for, in that in, realm, in, the in that caretaking, realm. that, 
that mm-hmm. nurturing. Nurturing. Yeah. Yeah. Because, of course, we want to nurture each other. And the pattern that we start with for nurturing is parenting. At least for us. For, we, yeah. we do. Yeah. So I love that we've been talking about it. It's fascinating to me that there's so much going on in the, the, the creation of a ritual. I want to just talk before we wrap up about what, ha- what rituals can be used for. Cause rituals also oh. don't have to be day to day. They can be, they can be like on a, sure. a yearly scale. Oh. They can be for transitions, transitions. of any kind. Yep. So rituals can serve. I mean, we all have some holidays or some some sacred days or special days that we set aside and we do certain things, you know. Some maybe people have, have a special song they sing at a birthday. <laughs> like that, perhaps. <laughs> um, so rituals absolutely around. Like, for instance, um, always serving donuts at the twins' birthday. Right. Or something like that. A ritual like that that it's really it's a it's a yearly event that happens it has meaning attached to it sure but also at transitions that nobody expected and maybe nobody wants but the ritual can be the this well i mean we have things like funerals and weddings to mark these transition times when the human soul feels its liminality feels how it's in between mm-hmm. and Right at the beginning of the us, <laughs> the you and me, I was in a really intense transition. My leaving my first marriage meant a total reorganization of my psyche. I never imagined myself as a person who could or would do that. And I created a ritual to signify, to, to, to help me move through the pain of that transition. Even though I instigated it, it still brought with still it all transition. of this stuff. Yeah. And I created a ritual for myself. There's actually a formula for it right in Project Relationship in the book. And the, the, the ritual that I made did what I had hoped the divorce itself would do. It closed out my marriage. It, it finished it. I couldn't do that with my former husband. We weren't in a place where we could talk. With Divorces each other. are tricky that way. Uh, yeah, we were. Yeah. We just weren't. Um, that wasn't a thing that could happen then. Um, and yet, I needed closure. So, creating a ritual and completing it allowed me to move through that threshold to to experience it and and note for myself that I've come out on the other side changed. So that's not one that I intend to do over and over again, though. I will make you clear. I will make it clear that you're paying for all of my divorces. Oh yes. This has been Um, established. (laughs) I, I don't ever have to want to do that again, but I love knowing that these big transition points can be eased. Yes. And, and that's, that's key. So, I I think for me, who is uh, like just searching for ease all the time anyway, but um, yeah, transitions can be really, really rough and rituals can help ease those transitions by making, helping you be aware of the meaning that's in them yeah. for you. So this isn't like just about reconnection. No. Also about reconnection to self. To so self. not just reconnection yeah. to other or partner. But reconnection to self yeah. and noting, what did you just say? The noticing that there's meaning. Noticing that there's meaning in, in, the in the transition. That it, even if it's a tremendously painful transition, there's also meaning. It, it does, it's not meaningless. You look for it. You find it. And then you honor it. You, you bring it to visibility by the transition. So you embody it. You embody and then it. You, and you represent it physically, you know, all yeah. the things that you talked about in the book. Okay. So I'm feeling right now the need to make sure that I've I've taken a look at all of our rituals. Because we yeah. didn't plan to do this episode. So no, we didn't. <laughs> this was very spontaneous. But I'm going to take a look and make sure that I am um, That we're finding all the meaning. That, that we are. Yeah. Thanks. This Thank was you. fun. It was. Okay, everybody. Till next time. Bye. Have fun. <laughs>
Thank you for listening to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton and Ken Hamilton. If you're enjoying our conversation, we would be so grateful if you would drop a rating and quick review so more people will be able to find us. And if you have questions or suggestions that you of things you'd like us to tackle, please send an email to jolie at joliehamilton.com. I'd love to hear them. Project Relationship, the entrepreneur's action plan for passionate, sustainable love is available on Amazon in Kindle, soft or hardcover versions. This book is a succinct, practical guide to improving your love life. I wrote Project Relationship to give you a set of quick action tools and conversation guides that can transform a mediocre relationship into a fabulous one. These tools are based not just on what Jolie learned in her studies, but on what we actually do to make our relationship thrive. Until next time, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news.